biotechnology being a range of methods that can be used to alter living organisms to improve on plants or animals and also aid in drug production. Questions about its safety are frequent and many. I believe if we can revise and uh, change the application of, of, of having leadership at grassroots level and also do a lot of sensitization of the masses, understand what their role should be, I think we can come out of this, um, this quagamaya of having food insecurity at homestead level other than really looking at the biotechnology and biosafety. The drive towards agricultural biotechnology is largely to make agriculture affordable and control hunger. As a result, there are innovations like plant varieties that can withstand drought, disease, pests, and those that can tolerate the effects of herbicides. Examples of genetically engineered plants include the Bt cotton, which can produce a protectant that kills selective insect pests, mostly the love of moths and butterflies. Bt means Bacillus thuringiensis, a soil-dwelling bacterium scientists have found useful in the production of biological pesticide. The same Bt has been introduced in the maize crop to kill a common insect pest known as Tembora, on Diwulira in Uganda. Bt cotton has become a success story in India, where cotton acreage increased from 50,000 hectares in 2002 to 10.6 million hectares in 2011. In Uganda, the trial of Bt cotton was completed in Kasese, but Bt cotton will not get to farmers until there is a biotechnology and biosafety law. Bt maize is mostly grown in USA, Canada, South Africa and Bulgaria. Trials for Bt maize which kills the stem borer are going on in Uganda at the National Crop Resources Research Institute in Namulonge. This is the same maize as this one, but this is infested with insects. So you can see the damage caused by insects. So you see these holes on the leaves caused by the stem borers. They also cause holes on, in the stems, also on the cobs. Now this one, once they eat it, they what we call the, the, the margin leaves, they cause dead heart. We want to compare eventually what is the effect of the insect against the, when the, it is not there. What is the yield loss? You can only do it by protecting the rest with chemicals so that there is no insect. You have ultimate yield in case the condition was optimum. What would you get? And now if the disease affects, how much do you lose? Probably if people knew, they would not be opposing some of these technologies. We are using... We, we, we are using pesticides, yeah, systemic pesticides, to, to cure everybody now producing maize, uh, sprays it. And they continue spraying up to even harvest with the pesticide that affects human beings. And, uh, and uh, uh, if they were using Bt maize, they would be using uh, maize which is producing a, a toxin that affects only weevils, but does not affect human beings. Genetically engineered crops are not grown by farmers in Uganda, but hybrid crops are grown, although they are confused for GMOs. That is conventional plant breeding. Use pollen, put it on a stigma, get a new product, continue doing that process, repeating it, until you get what you want. So most crops were growing in Uganda were developed that way. The crux of the matter is now there. That when you introduce the GMOs, you actually kill the survival. First of all, the existence and survival of the indigenous seeds is completely put, put to threat. We can't come up with a product when you don't have the enabling, actually, environment which could allow its promotion and utilization. So we have never, and I must repeat, we have never released any genetically modified organism. Critics of biotechnology have always argued that such plant varieties are new and it is impossible to know their effects on human health. The toxin don't end up at uh, killing the, the, the weevils and the, and the like because you know the crop you are producing is for human consumption. So when you look at the hairiest part of it, it becomes a very major concern. It is the advocates who campaign against GMOs, who make those claims. The scientists who deal with biotechnology have not made any claim about this is the way to go. For them, they see a problem and they see a way of solving it. You have a, they, are, they are not imposing it. They are not imposing anything. You, you have a banana uh, wilt disease that has attacked our bananas. 
the job of the scientists to say, how do we overcome that problem? And the technologies they have in their hands, the most efficient now is biotechnology. Almost all the modern agricultural biotechnology research tools and techniques can be applied by Ugandan scientists working from the different research centers. Back in their laboratories, many of them are actually busy engineering or modifying plants to give them desired characteristics. What they do is to introduce the genes picked from a plant whose characteristics they want into another plant. These genes are then put into the cells of the plant they want to achieve such characteristics, like drought resistance, using sophisticated equipment and agrobacterium. This method, they say, cannot negatively affect plant or human health. The National Crop Resources Research Institute at Namulonge is one of the public research agencies involved in GMO trials. Here, concentration is more on staple crops like cassava, maize, rice, sweet potato and others. All transgenic or genetically modified plants are under strict confinement, meaning not a single plant has been let out of the confined field. In fact, these plants are destroyed on harvest. Also, trials here are conducted under the terms and conditions set by the National Biosafety Committee. At the National Agricultural Research Laboratories Institute in Kawanda, scientists are finding a genetic engineering solution to matoke or green banana, which is low in vitamin A. The vitamin A gene from carrot has been introduced into the green banana. Their results? Bananas with orange fingers. According to scientists, the vitamin gene successfully registered in the green banana. Still, this variety like the one that was given a gene from sweet pepper to resist banana wilt will not be released to the public in accordance with regulations set by the National Biosafety Committee. The challenge with genetically engineered crops is that they are selective. For example, maize that was made to resist drought can be lost to the stem borer. If you can fight a disease, if you can fight drought, hmm, if you can dominate nature, not imitate nature, I think there's high prospects of it. Several critics allege that multinational seed companies like Monsanto are influencing and intend to cause the widespread production of genetically engineered crops. In Uganda, Monsanto donated the Bt biological pesticide used in Bt maize trials, but scientists insist the company has not bribed anyone. Monsanto as a company only donated the trait, the Bt, the BT and the DT. And we are not going to market Monsanto materials. Next in this series, I will tell you the legalities around GMOs and why Uganda needs a regulatory framework that can enable self-development and application of biotechnology. Frank Walisimbi, NTV.